Hey, I'm Kyle. Welcome to this episode of the Newfoundland Hobbyists. So today we've got a really special episode on the show and continuing with the series on hand tools uh, we're going to be building a hand tool woodworking project. This is going to be a keepsake box for my little daughter here. This is my daughter. She's around seven months old right now and she is just magnificent. Best thing I've done in my life. Right? <laughs> she, is, she is just the best. But. Uh, you know how it is with kids these days, they get so many little treasures and perhaps it's always been like it, but uh, she's already gathering up a little collection of jewelry and different special little items, her uh, birth certificate and different things like that. Uh, and I thought it'd be nice to build a nice handmade wood box. So I've got some nice beautiful clear pine here and uh, we're going to be building it with just hand tools. So make sure you stay tuned to the rest of this episode. Okay, now with the little one inside, we can get to the real work. And uh, first we're starting out with layout. I'll show you my very intricate plan here, <laughs> which is basically no plans. I just kind of sketched up what I wanted the bottom to look like, how I wanted the joints to work. So I'm doing up something here that's not too complicated, but is really strong design. I'm going with 16 inches long, just playing around here now with the wood I have. So taking a look, layout is probably some of the most important part of the job. Uh, take your time with layout, make sure you know what you're doing, make sure what you have in your mind is going to eventually be the product. So make sure you plan so that you're cutting away from any knots or anything like that. And that's pretty much it. We're not getting too complicated here. Like I said, I did pick a type of design that would allow me to use my new Stanley combination plane, my 45 that we restored last week. I did do that. I marked my lines with a knife because a knife is so much more precise. A pencil is a job to keep it real sharp. And, uh, and it leaves a real wide line. A knife lead leaves a super fine, super fine line. Just like that. And we have a beautiful crispy line. You can probably see that there in the light. Just lovely. So now with our bit of marking done, we can go ahead, throw this in the soft jaw vise, and start making a couple cuts. I'm going to use this beautiful vintage panel saw here. So I cut that piece of material down with my vintage panel saw. It's a 10 point, belonged to my grandfather, it's just a beautiful saw. Uh, I cut down about a, between a 16th and an eighth of an inch to my line, just because I like planing right up to my line so I don't get as much tear out from the fibers and whatnot, just get a nice clean edge. So now to plane this right up to the line, I have my beautiful little Stanley 9 and a quarter. This is a gorgeous little plane that I absolutely love all brass. This was a, a restoration by me uh, probably about a year ago and I, f I love these little planes like this for this type of work because they're so efficient and easy to use like this. I'll just set my cut nice and shallow and by doing it this way we'll end up with a perfect edge when we're done. Just set my iron out a little bit more let's 
just a beautiful evening sun coming into the workshop here now. And this is just woodworking at its finest here, I tell you. So the whole idea I'm trying to accomplish here is that I have the two sides of my box and I want the bottom let into the sides uh, in something that's called a dado or a notch just up maybe a half inch or so from the bottom. So the box is going to sit on its sides, the bottom is going to be lifted up from the floor. This will allow if the floor is a little bit off kilter or anything, you don't have a flat board trying to sit on it and it will always be wobbly. I've got the appropriate iron here, all sharpened up. Just a beautiful finish on it. And this iron is exactly the width of this three quarter inch material. I think I'm against the grain for starters. You can tell the wood is just not lifting out well. I'm also gonna make my cut a little more shallow. Let's try that. my first dado cut with the 45. It's not perfect. I got some little issues there. They'll keep getting better. But uh, such a nice tool. Nice to have uh, that wide blade. So there we have it. Our very first dados cut with the Stanley combination plane. These will meet just like this. You see we have our nice groove there and our bottom will be glued up into these notches. So this is an awesome feature. I built a couple boxes like this now. It's how I did the bottom of my tool tote and it makes it so you have a super strong joint. Instead of just uh, butting wood face to face like this and putting in dowels or putting in uh, nails or something like this, your wood is actually set into the other piece of wood. And then you glue it and put a few dowels or something and you have just so much more strength. You have more gluing surface and you have that bottom ledge of the wood that uh, sort of holds up on your bottom. Okay, so I've done up the math and to fit inside that notches the bottom needs to be seven a quarter wide by the full 16 long. Now I've got this end of my piece of pine here is completely broken away as nine and a quarter boards. So I'm going to cut my two inch waist off of here and get rid of that. Just all about maximizing your material. Getting the most out of it, the least wastage. Because I save every little scrap for future projects. So we need 16 inches by 7 and a quarter wide. So I'm going to set up my combo square here. So what you could do is just stick your knife in the slot that you made when you measured but your combo square up against it and then mark your line. You can make that nice and deep there. It's just a real nice deep cut there now. Now we have to measure seven and a quarter from our good side. Seven and a quarter. So now we have a beautiful crispy line. I don't know if you can see that or not. In each dimension, just look how beautiful that pine is. It's so nice working with nice materials. Now we can do the fun part and make our cut. I'm going to do the cross cut first. So I'm going to grab my 10 point distance again for this cut. We're doing the cross cut. Now again, make sure you're cutting on the waist side of your line, not on the keeper side of your line. Given that sixteenth again. Now we get to use our beloved rip saw. Yeah. 
you can see that it cuts extremely fast. It's a really heavy tooth saw. Here we have one of my favorite planes. It's a footprint number four smoothing plane. This is an absolutely gorgeous plane that I have tuned up extremely well. We'll make short work of this piece here. The first stroke or two will help me tell if I'm planing with or against the grain. And it seems like I'm planing with the grain. when you get that full full equal width stroke all the way along your board you know you have a nice cut check your square so now these pieces of wood although it's a little snug there I have to tap that together but they'll fit together just like that and now you see the bottom the bottom of our piece here is lifted up rotate that around for you. You can see our box taking shape. And the bottom is recessed up from the ground which is just great. So the actual bottom here would be this nice, very nice design. here. We have our bottom and our two sides and now we have our two ends. Now I have something special planned for the ends which is the most intricate part of the project. So right now I've got it all cut so these ends are just butting up against here and everything looks great and fits lovely and I've got you see the top is going to fit down between these ends so everything is kind of going to be tucked inside of this hair. What I'm planning on doing is recessing this entire shape here into the end. So I'm going to trace this shape out and then I'm going to show you what lovely hand tools I have here that uh, that I can do this with. The main reason I'm doing this is because I have my Stanley 71 and a half that I really want to play with. <sighs> this is a really special tool to me and uh, I want to be able to really implement it nice on this project. So that's what I'm going to do and I think it's something that's going to add a little bit of specialness to this box, make it a little more uh, intricate and I just I think it'll add to the overall design. So that's what I'm going to do now. So what I'm doing now is I've got my box laid here on its end. Everything is marked so I know that which end matches, which side is bottom, which is up, and so on. So now I've got it in place and I'm just going to trace around what I need to cut out later. So everything is set up just where it should be. I'm just going to make a few marks with my knife. So we've got this seam here, just like so. 
So there it is, all marked out. Now we can use the fun tools. So here is a quite rare and absolutely fantastic Stanley router plane. This is a 71 and a half. This little blade here protrudes through the bottom of the plane and it's wonderful for stuff like this because you can set it up and you can get perfectly deep gaps and you can stop with them. Look at that little curl of wood it just took off. How brilliant is that? You want a fun tool for a little kid to learn hand tool woodworking? This is the one. Super safe and so much fun to use. So I'll just work the plane right up next to the knife cut that I already put in. And these are really precise. They're easy to maneuver so you can get just the perfect cut. It's not a struggle. It's not difficult. You can see that we can recess right up to the line. When you do it with a, ch when you try to do this type of job, which is with a chisel, which can be done, it's just very difficult to get a perfect depth. So again, working on my skills, trying to stay within that line. Not an easy thing to do. If you take your time, not impossible. Okay, although not perfect, we have our first side cut. And in my opinion, it turned out pretty great. It's nice when your ideas work out. So here's what we cut. It's not super clean. There are a few places where I made a couple little mistakes with the router plane, but it's not a big deal, especially when the wood glue gets in there and we get everything put together. It won't be a big deal. Definitely won't affect function. You'll just see a few little things. This tool is just so satisfying to use. It's amazing. See, we can move a little quicker there now because we're starting to get a little edge. Okay, here now we have both the exciting part and the intimidating part, and that is glue up. If you remember back to the workbench episode, glue up sometimes don't go too well for me. So ever since that, it's kind of scared me, but I'll get over it. Just got some Elmer's Carpenter glue, nothing fancy, nothing too expensive. I tend to always make a mess with glue up as well, so I'm going to try not to do that tonight. Just going to put, put it there and spread it around. Don't think you'll regret it. So I'm going to seat these joints here now. one and two nice snug fit there Let's try it 
this way. Let's see if we can get it this way. Solid as can be. Looks great. It's turning out just like I wanted. Okay, so we are 15. I've got to cut into one of my nice big pieces here, but that's fine. I'll choose. Remember to choose the cleanest edge. I'll make a few light scores. Now we get to play with those saws again. This was side facing me, so you don't usually get as much tear. happy with the look. I just think that looks really pretty. The top will lift out of there. Lovely, lovely. One thing I could do, which I just thought of it, is pop a little hole in each end here and have it the top pivot up like so. If I put a dowel in there, I'd need to round the back bottom corner, but that would be really nice. So we have a little bit of material to remove. sand down my woodworking projects because I love to leave those old plain marks and stuff there. Just love the way it looks. But this box is from my daughter and if she happens to be digging in this box at some point I do not want any any splintery edges or anything that can catch her fair little skin. So here we have it here our solid pine handcrafted with hand tools pine box. A beautiful keepsake box that I've been meaning to build for a while and now it's all done <coughs> for my little daughter to uh, to grow up and to keep all her little treasures in over the years so when she gets older she, they can all be kept in one place and she can uh, have them and appreciate them. I'm really happy with how this turned out. Really proud of it. There's nothing fancy here. Most people could uh, probably tackle a project like this. It's a nice way to spend a few hours. It was nice to get back and do a little bit of woodworking again. It's a hobby I haven't touched for a while, but uh, it's a lot of fun. This box sits fairly heavy, uh, although not too bad. The pine is not too bad in weight, but it is all solid material. Uh, the lid cl opens and closes perfectly. Uh, very small gaps throughout this box. Just really proud of it, like I said. Thanks for watching. I hope you really liked this episode. Uh, if you'd like to see more material like this, head over to my YouTube channel. So let's go to youtube.com and search my name, Kyle Nosworthy. 
you'll find my channel, the first one that comes up. Lots more content like this. If you want to get in contact with me, head over to Facebook.com and search Kyle Knowlesworthy Weeder Fan. You'll find my, uh, my channel page there, and you'll be able to get in contact with me. That's it for this week. I hope you really enjoyed it. Next week is a season finale, and you will not want to miss it. It's going to be a fantastic episode, so make sure you tune in next week to the Newfoundland Hobbyist.